Well, I think you heard of the first delivery of the Rafale F4.1 to the French Air Force. Well, it's interesting, but it's almost business as usual, so definitely not worth a video. However, I was interested, so I was casually reading about it, then... Well, first, the logo is in English, and for a French aircraft, this is already big news. And honestly, of all the new things about the F4.1 variant, uh, which are honestly more, say, warlike, so they better fit a logo, they have chosen connection. So I couldn't avoid going down this rabbit hole, and what I found, well, you'll see at the end. Okay, I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain you what the Rafale is. It is a French aircraft. They call it Omni-Roll in the sense it is a multi-role aircraft. Uh, it entered service in 2001 with the Aeronaval, the French Navy, because they needed an urgent replacement for the venerable Crusader II. It is a Delta Wing twin-engine aircraft, low observable but not stealth. It is a bit difficult to say how many are in service at this precise moment, which is the beginning of March 2024, because uh, France actually provided some aircraft in service with the French Air Force to countries like Croatia or Greece, and then there have been orders to replace them. Currently, there should be about 160, 170 aircraft in service and 42 aircraft, 42 new aircraft of the variant F4.1 are in order. The aircraft, like all modern platform, had several variants. The F1 was the very first one that entered in service with the Aeronaval. The F2 was the first standard variant that was lately upgraded to F3 and F3R. As far as we know, all the Rafales in service today are at F3R level. It is a bit like the blocks uh, uh, in for the F16 or uh, the F35. And as I said before, the 2nd of March 2024, the first F4.1 has been taken in charge by the French Air Force. There are going to be a 4.2 and 4.3 later in the decade. So I started looking for news about the upgrade and it was not very difficult to be honest because every major news outlet has an article about that and it was quite clear that almost all of them had read the same press release. So there is no change in the aerodynamics, the structure or the propulsion. Everything stays the same. And in fact, it is not possible to tell Rafale 4.1 from an F3 uh, by just looking at it. However, instead, there have been several upgrades, or so they say. For example, the radar, the RBE-2AA, which is uh, a pretty modern AESA radar, has been upgraded. Apparently, there were problems with the moving target indicators and the air-to-ground modes. This has now been resolved, but here you see immediately what's the problem with this news. We don't know exactly what wasn't satisfactory, what the radar couldn't do and the pilot wanted it to do. Uh, we don't know why and we don't know what's changed. And probably there is less than 100 people in the world who really know what's going on and so we will need to live with it. A new system for preventive maintenance seems to have been introduced, but it is not clear if this means that new sensors have been installed in the structure, or it is just collecting information of uh, sensors already in place uh, that then are analyzed in, yeah, in the new different way that is possible today and it was impossible when the aircraft was designed. In the same way as the radar uh, improvements have been reported also for the electronic warfare and the electronic surveillance suite spectra. We don't know 
what these improvements are because there are no news about that but this is obviously the most secret part of the aircraft the spectra has already entered the internet mythology because there are rumors that it is the only electronic warfare suite in the world capable of active cancellation of radar returns i have my doubt but surely the french have a long tradition in electronics so i'm sure it is very efficient and they also worked on other passive sensors the aircraft has an infrared search and track and other uh, optical sensors in the frontal arc and it is reported that these have undergone in changes and improvement as well and the long overdue upgrade is the adoption of a helmet mounted display france has chosen the american scorpion because well that's a system that is uh, built with upgradability in mind is very easy to integrate but there are news also about the armament of the aircraft in fact the new f41 variant will feature a new variant of the french hammer system which is a guided bomb that has more or less no real parallels in the rest of the west arsenals it is considered a very effective system but so far it has been limited by the weight of the warhead in fact it consisted in a kit that could be added to 500 kilos bombs so far now it is available a 1000 kilogram version also with a penetration warhead to attack bunkers and other hardened targets moreover the aircraft is ready to accept the new mica ng that is the new and much more modern variant of the mica air to air missile that has been the main weapon of the aircraft for a very long time and now is receiving a radical improvement then we will cover in a different video but there is also another noteworthy improvement the aircraft is now integrated with the talios targeting pod the previous system that was sort of standard in the French armed forces, the Damocles, was not considered equivalent uh, to other Western systems like the Sniper. And apparently to integrate the pod, they had to run some fiber optic cables from the pod pylon to the cockpit to show the pilot the high definition images. And that was what made me spill the tea. So here we are left with two very strange points, almost mysteries. So there's the logo and there's the strange declaration about the fiber optics. So after some more research and a couple of scientific papers, and by the way, if you want to see the sources that I'm using for this video, well, the sources are usually reserved to those who support the channel by being a member or on Patreon. So after going down the rabbit hole for some more and reading a few papers, I may have found uh, a couple of plausible explanations, uh, but mm, sorry, now I have to go, so... So, in 2007, the Rafale with the Mika missile demonstrated, if not the first one of the first in the world, to be able to shoot over the shoulder uh, to a target that was designated by another aircraft. And that was, I would say, a rather interesting and rather important achievement uh, and very interesting technology. So you would expect that the aircraft is already well connected. I mean, it should be quite modern in terms of connectivity. So in terms of connectivity, we know that the F4.1 actually had some improvements. I am not entirely sure if the software defined radios have been implemented with this or they are planned for the next variant, but for sure it has been added uh, uh, satellite connectivity with uh, French uh, satellite military network and the new waveforms have been implemented even though we have no more details 
okay, I'm back in the office. However, French officials came on record saying that the objective, medium term and even long term, is the interoperability with the F-35. Because, yes, it's sort of becoming the new standard in NATO air forces. This has not been achieved yet, and it's not clear if it's going to be in a future variant of the Rafale, or uh, France will have to wait for the SCAF. However, this is interesting because interoperability with the F-35 may mean various things, but one would suppose that features of the aircraft like passive sensing or cooperative targeting could be shared well. This is telling us that if that kind of interoperability is the objective, then maybe these features are not fully implemented on the aircraft. At least not yet. So we know that there is a measure of these features going on among Rafales, but if we use the F-35, whose capabilities are sort of understood as a benchmark, then potentially the Rafale still has some way to go to get there. And probably this gap has been filled with the F-4.1, or at least partially filled with the F-4.1, hence the logo. It's just my speculation, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. However, this is not the end, because in this context, there was another strange, rather strange declaration from French officials. That is that for the Rafale to be fully interoperable with the F-35, well, the wiring of the aircraft is not adequate. So obviously, when it comes to interoperability, you think the data links, and that's fine, we know that is not there yet, but the wiring, the internal wiring of the aircraft? So we don't know much about the internal architecture of the Rafale, we know that is modular, we know there are some sort of central processing unit, but when you start going down the rabbit hole, you also find a couple of papers, and the diagrams are like this. Yeah, it's a, if you look online, there is a long story on how the aircraft is using a Spark processor and yada, yada, yada. But for what we are concerned now, it's important to understand that the aircraft uses a data bus, and the data bus is a Stanag 3910. So the Stanag 3910 is a strange data bus because it's composed of two lines, a high-speed line and a low-speed line. The low speed line is a MIL STD 1553B standard data bus, which has speeds of about 1 megabit per second. It's a great classic, it's been around for decades, uh, and most of the jets during the Cold War used that standard. However, in the 3910, it is used just as a control bus because the high speed line, which could be either optical, fiber optics or a copa is the line where the bulk of the data is transiting and the speed of that arrangement is 20 megabit per second. So basically you have two cables running around for the aircraft for 21 megabit per second. Well, now we live in the era of gigabits. Uh, even my cabling around the office is gigabit ethernet. So and that and that's and that's a slow one in commercial terms. So 20 megabit is very slow for modern standards. As a comparison, the F-35, which, which admittedly is about 10 years younger in terms of design, but probably even younger than that, uses a, a 1394B data bus, which is 3.2 gigabits per second. So if you put all this together. It seems that the aircraft and its internal data bus is not capable of managing the kind of data flow that is required for a full integration like it happens on the F-35. And this could also be a very good reason because it requires additional fiber optics 
to be compatible with the Talios targeting pod because if you add just a 2 or 3 megabit per second video stream to something that has an overall bandwidth of 20 megabit and it's already managing other video streams because the Earth uh, and the other optical sensors on the aircraft do have a potential a video stream, well, then you realize that, well, it's quite tough. It's probably going to saturate your bandwidth and may have problems in the communication with all the onboard computers. We don't know how much traffic is actually going on that network, but there is actually a possibility that a new video stream feed is too much and all the data that are associated with the sensor fusion and the cooperative targeting and all this kind of technology marvels that come with the F-35 require an interchange of data that is not supported by the data bus. Interestingly, they didn't speak about the computers, just the data bus. But I don't know why. So this story is quite interesting, and from this story we can probably learn that despite the fact that the Rafale we know has some form of cooperative targeting, there is still something missing. And by the way, other aircraft like the Eurofighter, for example, may have the same problem, although I suspect the Gripen doesn't. So I believe that this story is actually telling us that beyond understanding which are the improvements of the new variants, which is valuable information in itself, there is still something missing from these 4.5 or 4 plus plus generation aircraft in terms of integration and actually reaching the same performances as, a, say, a pure fifth generation aircraft like the F-35. And everybody's talking about stealth, but stealth is becoming less and less important as time goes by. Uh, and nobody talks about this, about computational capability of networking capabilities. I think it is an interesting lesson. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. So, thank you very much for watching. This was a bit of a strange video, different from the usual. A big, big thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by being a member. You are absolute stars. I couldn't do this without you. And if you like this video, please do the usual YouTube stuff. Uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, like or dislike. Hit the bell to get all the notifications. And it would be a source of great joy and pride if you could support the channel on Patreon or by being a member channel supporters have access to, well, me, but also have access to the material that I prepare for uh, the videos that I don't share publicly, uh, particularly the sources that I use for my videos. And sometimes I also make videos just for the supporters uh, that tell the story behind the scene. So if you want to learn more about the Rafale, please click on the video that is going to appear beside me. And if you got this far, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for having given me your time and attention. I consider this a honor. And see you the next time.